Right, we're going to talk about buying a brand new camera lens. It's such a fantastic, exciting moment when you buy a new lens because all the um, excitement about the focal length you want or the aperture or the, you know, the types of photos that you plan on taking with that lens, you know, it's brilliant. And it can be a really expensive thing to do. In fact, it often is a really expensive thing to do, especially when you're buying something like this, which is the a GFX lens. It's the 80 millimeter 1.7, which I don't know, it's around 2000 pounds or this kind of thing, which is only about 200 pounds. And that's the uh, manual focus 35 millimeter lens. And so when it comes to buying a new lens, there are a number of questions we have to ask ourselves to work out what's the difference between this and this. Now I know in our heads we think, well, it's just a better lens. Well, there's a lot more to it than that. And I wanna just run through a few of the things with you which make a great quality lens, a lens like this. What are the things that technically make this lens great? And then what compromises are we willing to make to buy a lens perhaps that's cheaper and therefore which way should we go in order to get a lens that's still gonna be a great lens but perhaps not the price of the really expensive one? And then where should we go? What things can we compromise on in order to still get great photos? So we're gonna get into this now. Before we do, if you're new to the channel, just to say, if you go over to photographymadesimple.uk, it's a completely free resource there for you to uh, read articles, watch videos, and basically become a better photographer. The whole website is geared around making you a better photographer. And I've got an article on there about this, about what makes a high quality lens, which is there to help you to make the right purchase the next time you buy a lens. So do get over and, and check that out. And please do share it around on your Facebook groups and things, because it's a free resource, so we just really want to get it out there. Um, okay, so let's have a think about what makes a high quality lens. Okay, so the first thing, obviously, is going to be extremely, extremely good optics. You're gonna want, if you're gonna buy a high quality lens and spend a lot of money, you're gonna want the best glass in that lens. You're gonna want the purest glass that um, is the highest quality optics to give you that perfectly sharp image. Okay, so you want to have the best optics. You also want to have the best build quality. You know, when you take a lens like this, you know, you realize that as you kind of hold it and you use it, you realize that it's been built in a superior fashion. It's got um, quality um, aperture rings, you can hear there. You know, it's got, um, they feel metal. They don't feel like they're plasticky and cheap. They've got that kind of feel to them, which gives you that immediate sense of, yeah, this lens is, is going to be built well. It feels like it's been built well. You want to buy a lens that doesn't have any chromatic aberration. Now, to kind of make that really simple, you just have to imagine the, um, and remember the Pink Floyd album, <laughs> and uh, you see how that light is coming into that triangle, and then it come, comes out as a, um, a kind of set of colors like rainbows, where what's happening is that the color is separating at the edges. And in its simplest kind of form, chromatic aberration is when, as the, um, the light kind of hits the lens, as it hits the edges, the color begins to separate and you get kind of those separate colors in your images. And that's not a good thing. Now you can, you know, try and correct some of that. You'll see in your, um, uh, in Lightroom, there's a kind of a button to press to kind of deal with that kind of thing, but it, it doesn't always do a great job. And you know, the cheaper the lens, say like a lens like this, technically will be very flawed and there will be lots of chromatic aberration. And as the light hits the edges of this lens, there will be plenty of that um, happening. And you expect that when you're paying, you know, a couple of hundred pounds for a lens, but you don't expect it when you're paying, you know, a 2000 pounds or something for a lens. So you really want, for a high quality lens, you don't want that to be um, happening. You also want a lens that's got um, a very low or no distortion. Now distortion is when straight lines appear curved at the edges. 
And so you know that kind of shot if you take it and the end, it's all kind of curved at the, <laughs> at the edges. Well, if you've got a lens with a lot of distortion, when you take the photo, you will see it's got that kind of curved nature. And again, that's just a, a technical flaw in the way the lens has been built. Um, you want a lens that's going to have um, weather resistance if you're going to buy a high quality one. When, when, what they do, they put loads of points on here that protect the, um, the lens from getting um, dust inside of it or water inside of it, moisture. If you're climbing mountains and it's, you know, minus five or something, you don't want um, the cold to affect the lens or the, in the other extreme would be the desert where I was recently. And, you you know, I felt good to know that my lenses were um, weather sealed so that the sand wasn't going to get inside. And so you want a lens that's going to protect you from the elements or protect itself from the elements so that the lens doesn't get destroyed. You don't want to suddenly find it underneath the lens all this kind of mist happening. Um, or seeing bits inside, bits inside of it. That's never a good thing. Um, if you can, you want to get a lens with a linear motor. Now, a linear motor is a much faster motor to um, when you operate the lens and you're kind of holding your shutter and you're trying to focus, it will all work much quicker with a linear motor than with a DC motor. Now, this one has a DC motor and you can hear it whirring. If you've had those lenses where you can hear the whirring around, Let's see if I can play it to you. Let's see if we can get it to whir. Let's try it. Hear that? That noise. That's the motor inside. Now this lens is 2,000 pounds and it's still got a DC motor in it. So that was a compromise that Fujifilm made when they made this lens. I assume because if they didn't, it would have been another who knows how much more money. So even at this level, they are still making compromises to um, bring the prices down. So whereas my 45 to 100 lens has a linear motor and it's extremely quiet and extremely quick to focus, whereas this is much slower at focusing. So if I was shooting, you know, some fast action sports, I wouldn't take this because it's, it's a very slow focus um, system, whereas my 45 to 100 is, is lightning. And so that's a, that makes a big difference. Um, you would want some IBIS in a really expensive lens. Now, in this kind of lens, you wouldn't get IBIS, but in um, a lens like the uh, 45 to 100, you've got a few stops of um, IBIS, and IBIS is image stabilization. Well, if you're gonna spend a lot of money on a lens, it's really great to have image stabilization, which basically stops camera shake, if you've not heard of that before. So when you are taking your picture, if you're maybe down at a 30th of a second and you press your shutter, well, normally it would, it would, the picture would blur a bit. Well, if you've got IBIS, then it won't blur. And I've done, I've taken shots um, down at like a tenth of a second or less and still completely sharp uh, with IBIS. So that's a fantastic thing to have. And I guess you would want a very fast aperture. And what that means is, is that your F stop numbers would get, as, as they get bigger, the aperture um, gets smaller. And as they, uh, the numbers get smaller, the aperture gets bigger. I'll explain that on a, a different video. But basically, f1.2, f1.7, um, you know, those, those kinds of lenses, the glass gets bigger because the aperture, in other words, the space, the hole in which the, um, the, the lens creates to let light in, it gets bigger and wider. And that creates more light to come into the, camp, the sensor and creates a much, what's called a faster lens. And so you get um, you can then shoot low light and still be at good shutter speeds. Well, those things cost money because the glass gets bigger and therefore it becomes more expensive to make. And so, again, that's another compromise that some lenses make. They might make an F4 lens, which is a bit smaller, a bit lighter, cheaper to make, and therefore um, is cheaper to purchase. So they are a kind of a set of the things that I would say are important when it comes to uh, buying a camera lens, but then you have to ask yourself, well, if you've got that big list and you're going to tick off all those things, you might be spending several thousand pounds to get the lens that you want, or at least many, many hundreds of pounds. So where do you compromise? And is it worth compromising? Well, I'd say it is worth compromising. And I I'll tell you why. If you are a landscape photographer and you're looking to buy a camera lens, well, you don't always need a lens that is an f-stop number of 1.4 or even 2.8, because it's very rare that you're going to shoot um, wide open at those 
apertures because you want to capture the whole scene. Therefore, you're going to be shooting at maybe f11 or something like that. So you don't need to buy a lens that has a really wide, expensive aperture. And also that would make it heavier and more difficult to carry up a mountain. So you might want to buy a lens that's an f4 lens. Now, f4 lenses are much cheaper to buy because there's, there's less going on inside of the, um, the glass size. And actually, you can they are really sharp lenses. Often I find that f4 lenses are often sharper than f2.8 lenses at f4. And so, you know, you can compromise there, save a lot of money, and you're shooting at f11 anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, so it's worth compromising there. And I'd say even lenses like this, you know, which this lens is technically flawed on every level, and yet I gave it a really good review um, on my YouTube channel recently. Now, why did I do that if it's technically flawed? because those technical flaws can produce beautiful images. And so it's not necessarily about getting everything perfect because everything perfect just looks clean and perfect. And that's not always what you want in a photo. Often you, know, you want that texture. You want that slightly kind of unusual, um, you know, edges and, and curves and all kinds of things um, on the frame because it helps to create interesting photos. So for me, I have so much fun shooting with this little 35 millimeter lens because, and that's why it's on my X-T1 because it's the lens I'm using the most at the moment because it's just got that, something about the atmosphere that it creates when you shoot with it, even though it's technically flawed. Now, as with all kind of vintage and vintage style lenses, there often are many, many technical flaws to them, but you just have to remember you're paying such a small amount of money for them that, you know, you are going to expect those flaws, but those flaws for me are the things that actually can create the atmosphere. And so personally, I would say, look at lens lenses like this for much less money and you will have so much more fun. Whereas lenses like this, they are fantastic for commercial photography. So I use this for commercial work, portraits, food photography, this kind of thing, because my clients, they want clean, accurate colors. They want everything to be exactly as they can see it at a very high quality and to print it very large. So it makes sense to buy this for commercial. But for shooting photos of my family and for you know general, particularly street photography and social documentary photography, you know, the lenses can get away with so many more flaws uh, because they're not going to be noticed so much in those photographs. So I would say start with your list, tick off all those things that are really important and then say, actually, which ones can I ignore? Because it's not really going to be a big problem for my photography, um, for taking pictures of my family or holiday or whatever. And you, you can begin to kind of tick off those things. And maybe the good way to do it is to buy one really good lens and spend a bit of money on that and then buy a couple of lenses which are like this, which are much cheaper. And then you've got that kind of nice um, opportunity to choose then between, you know, having a really clean looking, you know, perfect lens or having a lens which is much more full of kind of fun <laughs> and atmosphere. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to really give you those, that kind of different options there to help you to choose when you do come to pick your lenses. Um, so I hope, hope you find this helpful. Um, yeah, let me know if I can help in any more. I'm gonna do a video soon on some of the autofocus systems um, to really help us understand about autofocus, um, about contrast and phase and all kinds of different things, which really does help us to understand how our cameras work. But um, yeah, I'll get to that very soon. But yeah, do let me know if I can help. If you're buying lenses and you're not sure, do send me a um, come over to my Patreon channel and I can help you then. It's much easier. And you can message me. My link's below for that. And you can message me on Patreon. Don't forget, photography made simple as well. Um, and yeah, I'll see you soon. Cheers.